Today I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about Nepenthes edwardsiana, uh, especially about its cultivational requirements. Now the Nepenthes edwardsiana is one of the coolest Nepenthes species. Um, it's very iconic. Um, it comes from the Kinabalu range um, on the island of Borneo, uh, where it grows as a high elevation plant. Um, now Nepenthes edwardsiana um, can be tricky in cultivation, so I'm going to go over a few of the uh, tricks that we've learned uh, cultivating it for the last uh, couple decades. So. Um, this right here is a Nepenthes edwardsiana from uh, Tampa, Yukon. Um, they've grown from seed by us um, since 2011. Um, now, um, uh, Nepenthes edwardsiana uh, wants um, highland conditions, you know, something like cool nights, warm days, like other highland Nepenthes, um, but it's not ex as exacting as other species like Raja or Vilosa. Um, actually, um, Edwardsiana can grow, be grown kind of as a, like a highland intermediate plant, um, at least for a few months, and it will still thrive. Um, but one of the, the keys to Edwardsiana is making sure that it's got proper nutrition. So it wants to be fed, but only through the pitchers. Um, you don't want to fertilize it at all. We're talking um, like even a 50 ppm uh, dose of fertilizer can set it back and force it to not pitcher for a few months. Um, another thing about Edwardsiana soil is it wants to be kept in a well-draining media um, that um, um, is not wet all the time. So we use net pots and we use a, quite a bit of aggregate in our media for Nepenthes Edwardsiana. We'll use perlite, akadama, um, and sphagnum moss uh, mixed in almost equal portions um, you know, to, to give it that good drainage that it's looking for. Now, one of the things that I've always found really fascinating about Edwardsiana is how polymorphic the pitchers can be. And this can be true of a lot of the Nepenthes, but you know, particularly with Edwardsiana, the pitchers can really change shape and color over time. Um, and it really depends on its environment. For example, this Tambayukan form is kind of typical of some other Tambayukan uh, form Edwardsiana and that it's kind of this red, um, orangish color. But really, this can get deep red um, in the middle of winter whenever it's getting those cool nights. And that's true of any Nepenthes species. They tend to put on, or at least Highland Nepenthes species, they tend on to put on the best colors whenever they're getting those cool nights and cooler conditions. Now, I've got another form of Edwardsiana right here. This is one of our favorites in the greenhouse. This is an Edwardsiana um, uh, we got as a rooted cutting from another um, US grower um, who got this originally from Malaysiana Tropicals when they were in their heyday in, uh, in the 1990s. Now, this is a, one of our most vigorous plants. Um, it, it's a female, which we have flowered, um, and you know, we just love to make uh, Edwardsiana hybrids with plants like this, and um, it, um, it's quite vigorous. You can see that we um, are able to get it to hold a few pictures at a time, um, but the, the really cool thing about this is if, if Edwardsiana is hitting its stride, um, it will basil pretty prolifically. You see right here, it's actually got two basils. Um, and uh, you know, at some point, um, you know, we'll uh, we'll probably take cuttings of this, and, you know, and, and pass it around cultivation to make sure that uh, there's more females in cultivation. Um, so, one of the other things that I should mention about Edwardsiana is, whenever you piss it off, it will not be happy for a few months. So you just need to be patient with it. So, uh, for example, this. Edwardsiana right here is another one of our 2011 Tembe Yukon seedlings. And you can see right here, it had a um, part of the main growth uh, which died off. So it can be very prone to stem rot um, over time. Um, you know, if, and you gotta be watching out for this. Um, there's actually some famous growers um, who have lost their big specimen plants very quickly because um, you know, the stem rot can take over and it can spread throughout the plant. So, if you have something like that, what you want to do is you want to cut below the, the stem rot and cut above the stem rot, just uh, making sure you're, you're getting very green, healthy xylem, um, and, uh, you know, a, bl a blow and, a, and above. And you know, it, it, Edwardsiana can root uh, pretty readily. Uh, you know, and also it will put out basils, but it will take time. You know, after a plant, uh, um, you know, it has been stressed out, it will. Um, you know, eventually recover if you meet all its conditional requirements, but it could take um, six months. This one took almost a year before it actually started producing growth again. Um, and um, you know, so it's something you always need to be aware of. Um, you need to make sure that um, um, you know that you're feeding your Edwardsianas regularly, or else um, you know they, they can also start to go downhill as well. And once they, you know, Edwardsiana, the, the the thing about it is it, it can get this bad cycle where it's not picturing 
um, you know, so it's not really able to supply itself with nutrients. So it can go through these phases where like months, sometimes years at a time, it's just not not happy, not not pitching. Um, but whenever you actually get it to um, uh, put out regular pitchers and growth, you just keep it going and you can have a beautiful plant that's putting out gigantic pitchers and a bunch of flowers and all that. Um, so I hope this video is helpful. Um, you know, just reach out to us if you need any more tips and tricks on how to grow with Eddie's Edwards Yana.